edit for the yellow theme so I chose a sunflower as a yellow object and the model is gonna be me self portrait and this is my base image when I I did a rough composite of the layers that I need so I sh I got all the shots that I needed and checked all my shots and this is some of the ones that I got so this is for the hand this, this hand and then for the color and then the sunflower so my theme um, my concept for this one is like the person is like the sunflower but inside it is like nothing there's nothing there but there's a person and that person is a sunflower as a head so it's kind of a surreal concept I thought of this like like if a someone is someone is like uh, your son or someone special to you is like a sunflower to like yeah so it goes in that kind of direction where where someone is a sun sunflower for someone else yeah if you understand what I'm getting with this but this is a very very bright image I would probably change I was thinking of actually using the the shirt as a black one so it's kind of kind of a, um what they call this it's kind of a contrast between the yellow and the black but the blue here kind of goes well so I'll probably change the blue of this shirt into something else so I'll need to do a lot of editing here to so clean up the shirt. The I I I don't mind the creases on the shirt, but probably remove some areas here, here, and some areas as well. And then I'll also clean up the cutouts here, and then cut out the sunflower. So it's just that, and then leave that with this one and then I'll probably add some shadowing here and then remove my head so for this I need a good background template so for the background is it this is the background so I'll so I shot this in manual focus so I didn't have to so my focus never changed the whole time I was shooting this so it's a good practice especially if you're shooting composite always have constant consistent so here yeah, I'm just aligning whatever needs to be aligned it might not 100% align but it's there it's fine So if the background uh, the background that doesn't match well with the back the the other shot you can always change whatever is not consistent. So it's kind of darker on my original shot. So I can just adjust it a little slightly, just a bit with curves. Clip that onto and these ones they're quite easy to just clone in I was looking for a shot that was um I didn't realize that I had to actually remove the sunflower until today because I just needed a shot of the shirt without anything and the background so it's, it's my fault partially since it didn't really occur to me that I was gonna photoshop everything in I thought it would magically align everything no I was wrong so you have to plan plan out everything every shot needs to be planned out especially in a composite because you don't want to run into problems like these 
Luckily for me, I can still fix the the problem in post production. So there, petals are gone, flowers gone. I just need a good cutout of this area. A good way to cut out is using the pen tool. It doesn't have to be super precise, but the more precise you are, the best. Because you're gonna be using this as a guide, and also this is the base image that you're gonna build your your scene upon. If you guys want um, tutorials in using pen tool, then you can check out my other video. I'll make one, uh, probably make a video with. Pen. It's a very it's not a very hard tool to master, but it's gonna be helpful, especially when you're doing high-end editing for products or anything of the like. Because a pencil is really, really just the probably the most useful tool, especially in high-end edit editing. And let's do a selection of this one feather. Now it's all of it's gone, and I have a layer for color right here. No, I kind of had this at uh, 50% and I tried to align it as best as I could with a certain angle. So I'm just going to get what I can use from here. Probably use this area area here and then until here and then grab that to use this area. Good starting point, right? So let's try it out. Just first mask it and see if my idea works for this one. I'm just gonna grab that area over there. So everything looks a bit realistic. So I'll just ma uh, I'll just match the color from here with the other one here as well. And then I could just blend everything in. From here as well. So I don't need to do this really, I don't need to do it usually in high-end editing. Everything needs to be precise because it would be printed in super big shots. And not everything can be done perfectly, of course. And I can use that to actually cut or just need to combine these lines so it looks like it's kind of seamless but it's not it's really it's not and then uh, if you want to do it now probably let's adjust this so it's a bit darker compared to the original shot and it's also a bit cyan so let's just add so the there's kind of like um distinct blending here so what I do is uh, change the opacity yeah it doesn't work and then we're gonna do a little bit of blending with the color here here is um let me see so guys just play around with your opacity and flow especially when you're using a brush it can be very helpful when you're blending uh, um layers such as these these ones slowly reducing the line that heavy line a lot of the color here it's a little bit of blending until there only. You can adjust that later when we're doing curves. Slightly brightening this area up because it's it's blended. I need it to be a little bit darker because my head was there, so there was a shadow. There's a shadow right over here. So uh, I just want to slightly brighten this area up and just add a, a curve. also need to remove that logo. Logos are a big no-no, especially in, well, everything. No. Just healing brush that. 
And this one was kind of distracting. So, well, wow. so removing this um, because uh, I'm not really sponsored. <laughs> Damn you, shirt makers! You're not making, you're not paying me to do this. If you are, I'll keep your damn logo there, but yeah. Anyway, there. So the color is all intact. There's no more head. And next is the sunflower. And also the arm. Like, I like the pose as well already. So I just need to change my skin here into an empty shirt. Kind of like this one. But let's start with the sunflower first. So two do a cutout I would try to use channels because channels does a pretty good job doing that like here in the reds see that and then I would do levels it's kind of hard to cut out the petals one by one so I'll start with that and then move on to the stem later I'm gonna be burning the background here so it doesn't for my hand I would do a pen tool again. Lasso this area. And then control alt click. Then you would get the selection of this area only. And then click the layer mask first. Then we make a new one, the yellow. So you can see there's a good already good cutout of the petal. But everything else seems just it's gone. Go to your mask and then do a rough brush on the middle bit, middle area. So I'm gonna be brushing and you can use dodge tool for some areas like this one. Burn for the, the black areas. So if my hand is still there, kind of, yeah. So all I have to do is just probably just do a lasso tool. Oh my god. The cat out. The rough lasso area of this and paint it black. Paint that area black. Oops. And then we need another cutout of this. I choose not to include it, but it goes it it gives a bit of a story. It adds to story as well. So you can just use a I can do a pen tool as well, but you can also use this one. Follow the lines. Uh, I was shooting this. People were like saying that flower, oh, really nice flower. And I'll tell them, yeah, it's fake. They'll be like, no way. Yeah. Careful not to double click when you're using the lasso tool because you're going to restart every time. Maybe instead of you can also use the pen tool, disable that first, and then use the pen tool. Now I have the sunflower, I can just mask it out if depending on where this is like for example here I already have the selection then I can use that to mask this area out so invert that and then and then just add so now we have the cutout of the sunflower next is this area so this hand I need to hide here. The best way to do this is to use a mask. But I also need to show this area as well. So let's start with that. Let's do a rough selection of that area and then selection. Probably one feather on then I can hide that area out and I need to put this back in see that I need to put back this area I want to be able to blend the hand 
with this area with the um, also making it look like the branch is super straight here doesn't have consistency sake of course you want a bit of um, you want them them being the audience think think that this is one cough cough roughly do and since the, my background is also doesn't have to be super 100% accurate and it in make it look like it's blending cloth the easiest one the easy, easiest thing to blend is probably cloth because people don't really know if it's blended you know actually one cloth or there's a lot of cloth there somewhere so you can just what you can do now is like you also need to remove this and then also this one so I need to do a cleanup of this it doesn't really look natural especially if you have you know, I'm already holding this area then there's another seam there inside so it's not very convincing I need to remove uh, that People tend to look at lines more. It's end shape, so you just have to blend it in. Doesn't so it doesn't look noticeable. This area is gonna be dark anyway, so I just I need to make a path for this area. Okay, for this path, save it. And the area is hidden as well here as well. So. And we also need to do another cutout for this area. What we're gonna do is we're gonna copy the shadow that's here inside in the skin to blue shirt that we put over this area. Doesn't have to be super 100. You can just roughly clean this area out you can also do a path for this so I think it's better if we made a path If you want to make it easier, you can use the dodge tool here to whiten the gray tones. Now I have a good cut out of this area. All I have to do is uh, do a very good shadowing. Like for example, see it's I can have this area super dark, and then let's add another one. Or be the shadow area. This second one is gonna be the side. We, we can paint roughly paint it in. Because I'm in a it's clipped to this group. It's gonna be exclusive to this layer, the dark areas. It's not affecting a lot of the background of the shirt. But I can also lower the opacity here so it shows a bit more inside. Naturally, you would want something that's inside darker because there's shadow inside. But I'm affecting my hand for this one. So it's better if I do another cutout or just roughly mask it out again for this area I think I can do that and adjust your brushes so it's not just your brushes so it's not too long or too soft see like here there's still blue there probably so I need to mask that in 
gonna be seeing that. I saw it, so people will see that. Get back in more of the shadow and this give that halo effect. <clears throat> you see that there's like a halo effect happening on the side. Get rid of that and it's like assume that there's shadow here. And also in this area, because it's gonna be over the shirt, I mean under the shirt, which naturally should, there should be a shadow there and more. Now we have that it's empty. I have an empty shirt, nothing there, just empty everything, you know. Then you probably can lower the opacity for a bit. Some people will actually think there's nothing there inside. Mm. It gives that illusion that there's nothing inside the shirt. Only this power, which needs to be a little bit better with the cutouts especially this area it still looks a bit fake if I do like a bit of generic brushing then it might look better because it, it every, not everything is perfect in the world I like thing about uh, the thing I like about mass you see you can come back and raise and come back you get back Another thing that you need to note is I'm removing the lines, the dark area here, but then I'm also gonna add a little bit of shadowing because M does not look natural without the shadow. I mean, it's coming out there, but there's no shadow behind it, so there should be a shadow right behind that stem, curve. right below that layer the sunflower layer and then just saw in my photo that the shadow is lightly on this side slightly on the right in having a cut out that is precisely done part of the process if it's, if it's a bit blurry like this one it's fine if you can brush it in people won't notice that See that I added a bit of shadow to make it look real. And then slightly more shadow in this area. Be careful not to add too much because it is soft lighting, so it's not it's a shadow but it's gonna be very soft. Doesn't look like it's floating. Just enough shadow. Need to clean up a bit. So all the layers are intact already. It's edited, but I need to clean up some areas. Like for example, this area here. The lines here. Yeah. I don't want anything distracting the viewer from what it is very important, which is uh, some flower. People saw like wow, this guy is a beast. removing those helps a little bit with the in overall image. But people tend to see spots. So isn't really necessary when you're doing network, but it for me kind of helps with the image, so people are not distracted with what they see, but. They're focused on what I want them to look at. If they see these small stuff, then they'll be wondering why he didn't fully iron his clothes. You know? I saw another mistake here. You can see here, there's a um, seam of this. I need to that. What I can do is apply it. I can apply that, the layer mask and then just slightly adjust warp it to align to that line over there perfect but it does a job right now I've got it's not a perfect shot but I can probably do a lot of um, dodge and burning 
right now sample just adding a little bit and another layer for another layer curve layer for burning this guy a little bit of shape you know look thin than he already is there's nothing there sure dungeon burning can actually help with like a little bit of detail I want to enhance those dodge and burning then you can just make your subject like slimmer just adding the right shadows and highlights subject kind of pops out I also want to hide this zipper it's kind of distracting for me clean that up and you just clone it in so from here so got used to using Mac the I forgot what control and now people are not distracted with that also with this and uh, probably burnout area as well so you don't get a lot of attention with the pants I wear black pants but dark gray pants are fine it's kind of black anyway I don't want to change, like I said, I want to change the color of the shirt to something else. So I might experiment with a little bit of what I can do. I like the blues, but not in a, this kind of blue. More probably this range. And then so I have an action that adds cha channel mixer. It has a gray output and then red thir 0, 30 plus green 70 blues and it's at an opacity on 20%. So what it does it's it's technically a black and white here. Just slightly adjusts everything and desaturates the colors. Blues they change brighter and the reds are darker. So it kind of adds this kind of realistic vibe. Might change the color of the shirt again. Um, it looks nice, but no. Think about it. Blue, yellow, complementary color of yellow is purple. So whatever purple or violet it's in, yellow is gonna pop out. Pop out. I think the blue also mixes well with the yellow. 100% done with this yet. I still need to add more background. I've already gotten enough with the shots that I needed. Go plate for the background. This one, one ear, and another one at the top, and another one at the side. So I just need three shots. This one. Photo merge this. To edit in merge to port panorama in Photoshop. Or I can just grab this one and then edit in Photoshop. Edit in Photoshop. Then I'll show you guys a manual way of doing it actually. Try doing it the faster way. So I'll try to do the background manually and I have to select like three shots, one on the side of well one. So I need one for the side and then another for this other side and three for one, two or three for the top. Let me just lower the highlights up the shadows slightly and then apply it for almost all of this so you can edit this in Photoshop and just try to align and just warp the edges if they're not aligned you can just as 
set this as 50% opacity and you can slightly see the changes in the background if it's not aligned properly and then just apply that and mask it out <clears throat> so you can see when I mask out the subject then the background is expanded so let me just finish this with the rest of the background and then we'll get on to toning the image okay now that I have expanded the background I would then add the adjustments in this folder so everything here is just the composite and this is a adjustment change color and then add a bit of channel mixer and I want the background to be a bit darker on some areas again don't forget to change the flow I wanted the background to have a bit of a framing with the subject it's kind of darker on the sides and a bit brighter from the center add a little bit more brightness then add a little bit more shadow I feel like it's better if it's darker then it will also I need to add some shadow here as well clip mask and then brush in the shadow I think my sunflower is a little bit too bright on the set to, to make it look real sunflower then make it this area get around 80% and then let's add some detail to the sunflower sometimes it's good to add a little bit of dodging and burning then it would actually give your image more pop when your image is, has its depth with brightness and shadows with brightness and shadows it doesn't have to be super accurate but it does help with the overall image look and also I want the yellow to pop more then having that green mix with the yellow so let's use selective color the greens change it up to a little less color and then also the yellow so we don't get that mix and then mask out this area so it's not affecting our sunflower so you can see here the big difference a little bit of color change sunflower pop more with color so I'm just removing the highlights in the background it looks more evened out curve contrast curve maybe around 60% give it more contrast look even things out I still feel there's too much green happening in the background so I have to change that up use a use saturation adjustment and then reduce a lot of the blue greens and that then I see that there's a um, heavy dark area here so I, I want to just level things out on the other side it looks more uniform so some final touches on the image I feel like 
line is distracting to the subject although it can be a good leading lines to the center but this one here is um, kind of annoying so I will remove this area and also these lines here using the healing brush for these kind of edits is fine because you're using the background background is very blurred okay now so it fairly looks nice without that line on the side so let me just um, merge these layers so it's faster for me to load everything and also clean up faster so I need to remove this bit here remove this bit here so it doesn't distract this area this one these are just extra things that you, I need to watch out for especially when these images are very visually based now you see less noise in the background and more of the now I just need to balance out shadowing areas and then we add a last so you can see the yellow is popping out more here while the blue complements the color yellow and then let's add some sharpening so my sharpening is just an action that adds a high pass layer and then sets it on soft light and lastly is adding a little bit of noise for texture there you have my finished image for the first week